In a surprising twist, Adobe have entered the black forest of trained models. So today we'll take a look at what that's all about and what it might mean for the future of Photoshop and Premiere. Plus, Stability AI have released a virtual camera that you can use for free right now. It's pretty cool. Got an interesting use case on this one. All right, grab some breadcrumbs and some chocolate. We're heading into the black forest. Kicking off, Adobe is getting dirty, or you know, maybe another way of putting it is that they are allowing you to create natively in their products with external image generators. This is a pretty big deal for Adobe as up until this point, their AI messaging has very much been focused on Firefly and the fact that it is you know, clean and ethically safe. Now I'll note that I've always taken some ire with the branding of like ethics and cleanliness when it comes to generative AI models, but that's a whole other video. In the meantime, Firefly's cleanliness has come at the cost of you know, creating compelling outputs. And I'm not gonna bag too hard on Firefly. In fact, I think you can get some good stuff out of Firefly 3. It has been getting better, but I think that anybody that's spent any kind of time generating with Firefly knows that, you know, really its strengths lie in, you know, kind of like those very stock image type images. And I'll say that Adobe is aware of this. I can't say too much because of like NDAs that I signed, but as some of you know, I was recently invited over to Adobe HQ for their first Gen AI Leadership Summit. And while I cannot say what I saw there and what they told me, I, I do think it's fair game to talk about what I told them, which is we should have the option to get dirty. And while I'm not taking credit for any of this, apparently, well, they've, they've kind of found a way to do that. Yeah, Adobe announced that they have partnered with Black Forest Labs, creators of the Flux model, obviously, Google with Imagen 3, and Runway ML with Runway's Frames. According to Adobe, they state that, you know, many creators are experimenting with different models for different projects at different stages of their creative process. And they tell us they'd like the choice to experiment with many models and aesthetic variations in this phase directly in the creative workflows they're using. Which is, to be fair, what most of us at the AI Summit told them, albeit, you know, run through ChatGPT's PR release filter. Now to note, these models are not going to be popping up in like Photoshop or Premiere immediately, but rather they will first debut in Adobe Express and in Project Concept. Project Concept, which I have played around with, it's actually in beta right now. I'll leave a link to the beta wait list down below. It, it's pretty cool. It basically acts as a mood board mixer where you can bring in, you know, obviously different images or generate images and then kind of blend them together to create wholly new styles. And now with the ability to not only generate, but blend with, you know, Flux and with Image N3, I mean, Project Concept just got really interesting. Now, I do want to point out that Adobe is making it very clear that if you are generating outside of the Firefly model, you are taking you know, full responsibility to do so. But, you know, I got to admit, like the continue button down here, that essentially is the toggle switch that I had asked for. Now, the really interesting part to me, and I don't want to necessarily say this was buried, but in the announcement, uh, Adobe didn't also mention VO2. And that is kind of the odd man out here, you know, considering that everything else is an image generator. I did forget to mention that they also did bring up Fall to use as an upscaler. But as most of you know, VO2 is Google's video generator. So it's a, it's a little bit out of place here. But that is interesting as it does very much echo back to Adobe's announcement last year that Sora would be incorporated into Adobe Premiere kind of as a clip extension function. Now, obviously that never happened. And, you know, honestly, given the state of Sora on release, it's probably best that that didn't happen. But I do think that that goes to show that integrations with other generative models have been on Adobe's radar for a bit now. No word on release date or more importantly, pricing as of yet, but on that second part, at least, depending on how they approach it, it might end up being a cost savings as opposed to, you know, juggling multiple subscriptions. I'll be keeping an eye on this one and I'll let you know how it develops. Uh, for now, let's go check out what stability has been cooking. But first, so as vibe coding has become such a big thing recently, and if you're not aware of the term, it's, it's basically building apps using natural language. And to that, today I have a very cool tool that will allow you to build your own web apps from scratch without any coding knowledge needed. 
and you can have it up and online in just minutes. So Hostinger, who are sponsoring today's video, have just launched Hostinger Horizons. This allows you to create custom and personalized web applications and deploy them with no third-party support needed. Hostinger Horizons is perfect for founders or solopreneurs who often need very specific web applications, but you know probably lack the coding skills needed to pull it off. But what's really cool is that there are just endless ways to approach this. For example, I thought, and you know, obviously relevant to this channel, it would be cool to put together an AI video and image prompt builder. And sure, there are plenty of prompt builders out there, but as we all know, each platform sort of has its own quirks when it comes to prompting. So I think putting together a no code web app is a great way of really fine tuning things to you know your tastes. So kicking off, we'll give it the prompt. Let's build an AI image and video prompt creator for Runways Gen 3, the AI video generator and frames, which is their AI image generator. And then I let it know that down the road, we're also going to add in some other platforms like Kling, Minimax and Luma Labs. Uh, and maybe a few more. Uh, so let's fire this off. And I'd say in about 30 seconds, we essentially have the beginning of our prompt creator. Now, an important note here is that it did give me tabs for Gen 3 and frames here and a prompt box, but it doesn't really know what it's doing yet. And that's because, well, I didn't provide it with enough direction. So for example, and sliding over to another version of this that I've spent about 15 minutes with, I would say, uh, you know, one of the first things I had to do was let it know, you know, the idea that I would like to be able to do is type in a very basic prompt and have you fill it in. Um, I then gave it essentially all of uh, Runway Gen 3's documentation um, just to let it know, like, this is how I, I want the prompts to be outputted. I also added in an image reference prompt builder over here. And just to show you how easy all of this is, is, as I famously say on the channel quite often, only psychopaths use light mode. Uh, so I'm gonna give it a prompt of create a toggle switch for a dark mode and then another mode for a darker mode. So it actually ended up going and one-upping me with a triple mode toggle switch of light, dark, and darker. I suppose we do have to let the psychopaths use our web app. So giving our runway prompt builder a test, uh, last we saw our man in a blue business suit, he was about to get eaten by a wolf. So uh, our prompt here is a man in a blue business suit and a wolf next to a campfire in the desert. I'll uh, hit the enhance button, see what we get. And when we utilize the prompt in Runway's image generator frames, we get this, which is pretty solid. I'm just glad to know that those two ended up friends. Now, obviously, you know, our app is not really ready for the world just quite yet, but once it is, it really is as simple as coming up to the publish button and... And now, indeed, it is off in the world. The other thing that's great is that Hostinger Horizon is an all-in-one solution. Uh, as you can see via our Hostinger dashboard here, if I come to website lists, um, I haven't named it, but yeah, I mean, there it is. So no confusing or difficult implementation. It just, it just works. And I'll grant you, this is like 15 minutes worth of work. I mean, this thing can get really humming with, you know, four or five hours spread out over the course of a week. If you want to try out Hostinger Horizon, the link, of course, is down below. There are a number of of plans here, each one does come with a 30 day money back guarantee. Additionally, you can use my coupon code TMedia for an additional 10% off your first month. My thanks to Hosting Your Horizon for sponsoring today's video. Can't wait to see what you build with it. Moving on, Stability.ai have released a camera control model that you can use right now for free. I gotta say, it's actually nice to have stability back in the game. I mean, it's no secret that over the last year or so, they have not exactly been the most stable. So Stable Multi-Camera is a multi-view diffusion model that transforms 2D images into immersive 3D videos uh, with realistic depth and perspective without complex reconstruction or scene-specific optimization. This is basically the first look at something that, well, I mean, honestly, Midjourney has been promising for ages, you know, the ability to have camera control within an image after it has been either generated or captured. Not trying to bag on Midjourney, as I know someone in the comments is gonna be like, Midjourney's toast. Uh, V7 should be within the next month or so. So I don't know, we'll see. So you can run a stable virtual camera right now over on Hugging Face, again, completely for free, or, 
code is also available if you want to run it locally. Running it on Hugging Face is simple enough. You simply upload an image. In this case, I kind of gave it a bit of a softball, sort of an isometric, I don't know, kind of like Lego Minecraft meets SimCity image. From here, you have a drop down of various camera moves that you can assign, uh, you know, orbit, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, Lemon Skate as well, which is that, uh, you know, figure eight kind of look. And you have choices between how many frames you want to generate between 30 and 150. Uh, once you upload your image, just hit the pre-process images. And once that's done, we just simply hit render video. Um, now, not going to lie, this takes a minute. And after about 10 minutes, we ended up with this, which admittedly on the orbit is a little bit on the choppy side. But if we look at this from a non-video perspective and just step through the frames, I mean, you can get some pretty good stuff out of it, particularly in the opening and closing frames. Admittedly, the middle section here gets a little bit on the janky side, but uh, again, you know, the model hasn't been trained on this style. But you know, when it, we rotate around to the other side, it, it starts to clean itself up. Now, even they admit this is a research preview and it has limited quality in certain subjects uh, due to training data, including humans, animals, and dynamic textures. That said, it did get me thinking about revisiting an experiment that we ran in the previous video, ironically, the one on Gemini 2.0 and how it kills Photoshop. It, it, does not, it doesn't kill Photoshop. In that experiment, we took this mid-journey generated image, kind of a you know kung fu fight sequence, and then ran it through Gemini 2.0 to get you know sort of alternate poses out of it, and then took those outputs over to Runway Gen 3's first, middle, and last frame to generate up a you know somewhat more coherent fight sequence. Not perfect at all, but you know definitely more coherent than most AI video fight sequences. So that got me thinking, well, maybe we could add stable virtual camera into this as well. Uh, so, you know, bringing our image in and then running a pre-process on it. Given what we saw from our SimCity output, I was pretty sure that Orbit was not going to be a very good use case here. As I suspect, it does not come out great. Again, nothing against, you know, Stability's model here. It very specifically said it's not trained on, you know, humans. Um, that's I, There is something kind of cool about this, though. I mean, up until today, I did not know that I wanted a Kung Fu sequence directed by Salvador Dali. But our move left actually ends up working out pretty well. There is a little bit of a problem, as you'll see, like uh, the her leg there kind of disconnects from her knee. Uh, that could probably be in painted out. The idea here being is that we could actually, you know, change camera position, bring this back over to uh, Gemini, change the poses again, and then now not only you know do we have pose control essentially, but we also have you know camera control as well. So is this perfect? I mean, most assuredly not, but I think it does go to illustrate exactly, you know, how much control we're going to have over both camera and subject via keyframes in the very near future. In the meantime, if you want to experiment with stable virtual camera, again, that link is down below. And, you know, again, I'm really looking forward to seeing some more interesting releases coming out of stability. It's, it's good to have them back. I'll be keeping an eye on what stability.ai is up to. And hey, maybe I can, you know, somehow score a James Cameron interview or something. But until then, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.